The Acropolis of Athens, the most photographed place in Greece. When the first settlers reached the Attica grounds, they must have immediately spotted the exceptionally beautiful and strange rock situated in the middle of the valley. It stands 150 meters above sea level and constitutes a natural fortress in its own right since only one of its four sides, the west one, can be climbed. On this side, we find engraved steps dating as far back as 1500 BC, used as an entrance point to the rock. All three of its other sides are nothing but sharp cliffs. On this spot, we find the first inhabitants of the area. On the rock, we find traces of a settlement from the Copper Age, an era dominated by the Mycenaeans throughout the Greek territories. They even built a wall around the rock to further protect the settlement. The stones they used were huge and were named Cyclopean walls because they believed real cyclops helped in the construction of the wall. Whereas we know these creatures were nothing but a part of mythology. In the event of being threatened by enemies, the hill offered shelter with relevant autonomy, as it had springs spouting fresh water. They actually made sure to include these springs in the part protected by the walls, but also made an underground tunnel so when besieged they could always get to the springs even when the city was surrounded by enemies. Thus, the rock became a true acropolis, a word meaning the edge of the city, a place people could run to to find refuge in emergency situations, such as when they were threatened by enemy armies. The reconstruction of the Athenian Acropolis, as a site exclusively for sacred worship, took place gradually from the 8th century BC onwards. Those days, the first Parthenon was built, a small temple dedicated to the goddess Athena, the same one we see today, albeit with many alterations. During the 6th century BC, when Athens was governed by Pisistratus and his sons, later called tyrants, an extensive construction work began with beautiful altars made of marble and attractive decorations. The most notable buildings were the Parthenon, the Erechtheion, and the Propylaea, a building which controlled the passage to and from the altars. Of course, those buildings look nothing like they do today. We know a few things about these buildings, from the traces we can see on the Acropolis, and a few references by ancient writers. But in truth, they are lost forever, destroyed by Persian conquerors in 480 BC.
The buildings we admire today are largely due to the famous Pericles, an inspired politician whose vision was to turn Athens into the political, military, and religious center of Greece, recognized by all other cities as the capital of Greece. To fulfill his goal, the city would have to possess unique glamour and glorious buildings. It would have to be admired and sought after, which gave rise to the need for buildings that would be found nowhere else. As an excellent orator, Pericles persuaded the citizens of Athens as to the necessity of such buildings and convinced them to donate the necessary funds to do so. We should bear in mind that Athenian leaders were required to attain the approval of the majority of the members of the Demos, that is, its citizens, before they went ahead in building their projects. This process took place at Pnika, a spot on the west side of the Acropolis. All the buildings on the Acropolis were meant to be monuments commemorating Greek victories over the Persians. 